Okay, so thanks for popping in. Um, this, this session is going to be about Zoom and how to make Zoom a little more interactive and a little more engaging and ways that we can do this. A lot of the framework for this presentation is based off of you know, personal experience from us working in e-learning, but also a document created by the Online Learning Consortium. And I'll go ahead and link that in the chat. Let me see if I can pull that link up real quick. It was called Pedagogical Considerations for Instructional Video Conferencing Sessions. I think it's a good read and it kind of covers some of the basics that we go over today, but it goes into some different things to consider as well. So definitely worth a read if you are considering doing, you know, teaching over Zoom um, as a, a lot of us did over spring and summer and maybe you've been are currently doing it now. Um, one thing that I want to go ahead and get started with is I'm pretty sure everybody is an expert on Zoom now, but if you aren't, that's fine. If you wiggle your mouse on your computer screen, you'll see that you'll have options across the bottom to be able to unmute your mic or click on the chat. And so those options will allow you to interact throughout the presentation with us. And we're gonna use some of these. We're gonna use breakout rooms, we'll use chat, we'll use a polling feature, and I'll kind of show you all these and how they can work together to create a great Zoom class. Right now I'm using Office, 300, Office 365 to present my PowerPoint. I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, I feel when you're presenting a PowerPoint over Zoom on a computer, it's really hard um, to present with the regular Office PowerPoint because it takes over both of your screens and I'm just not smart enough to figure out how to have it only take over one screen. So I kind of like having my other screen because I'm able to pull up participants so I can see who's in here. And I'm also, I'm looking, talking about my other screen. Also on my other screen, I'm able to pull up the chat so I can see if anybody's pinging me in the chat. As you can also see, um, providing live captions, Office 365 PowerPoint offers that as well. I just really wanted to demonstrate that as an, op as an option for you. Google Slides has a similar feature um, and it's definitely something worth playing around with. Is it 100% accurate? Absolutely not. I see a few mistakes in there, um, but it's, it's pretty close and it's getting punctuation now too, which is, I, I feel like every iteration, every time I use this, it's almost getting better and it has been for the last couple of years. Um, before we get, too far, I wanna let you know the goal of today, and I think I may have mentioned that earlier though, is to identify strategies to engage and assess adult learners in the online environment, specifically in synchronous sessions. And so to do that, um, I think there's a bunch of different ways and we'll look at some different options. But to get started right now, I've got a task for you. I'd like you to use the chat in Zoom, and I'll put your instructions in there now. I would like you to Put your name, your department, and answer this question. So put your name, your department, and what food would you cook if you wanted to impress someone? One, I kind of want to filter through all my colleagues to see who I should become friends with more. But two, another way to do this is to continue building a sense of community. So if you can jump in this chat, Go ahead and try to answer that question and let us know what department you're from. Thanks, Susan. Ooh. Okay. Indian lentils, okay. cool. Thanks. Jennifer Hurry is on point with the fall theme. She's got some pumpkin scones. Ooh, Vanessa will do a bruschetta. That's a nice little appetizer. Mm. Mary Nagel says yams. Yeah, I'm a big sweet potato fan myself, Mary. And then I think everybody's decided that Andy Schmidt is going to be their new best friend. So congratulations, Andy. You unlocked the best friend award. 
I think there's a there's a purpose in doing this. One, you know, to get a little sense of who we are, but two, getting the students using the tools before they're actually asked to do them in the presentation too. And so building community has got to be intentional in the online space and building community and having students develop a sense of belonging is important for their success in an online class. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll gravitate towards each other, they'll gravitate to specific people and they'll feel like they are part of a team, that they're not isolated, that they're not alone. So before we jump into a lot of the strategies, just kind of take a step back and look at adult learning theory, ways that we can really engage adult learners um, are over here on your, on, your, on your slide deck. You know, they, they thrive when they know their purpose. Um, when, they're, when you want to get them to learn, activating their schema is important. So introducing the topic maybe prior to the presentations or prior to the live sessions or get them thinking about got it through, through some chat options or uh, mini presentations. And then always think, you know, how am I going to assess this, this learning opportunity, the Zoom synchronous session? So how can they demonstrate comprehension of what happened or, um, or prior, be, you know, prior and prior materials, prior lecture materials? How can we demonstrate their comprehension of what's going on in here? Because if we go back, we don't want our students to be the, the passed out chihuahua in, in their classroom because they will be. Uh, I've got a 15 year old and I went downstairs and, you know, this is kind of what he looked like. And so we want to make sure that they're engaged for our, our sessions. And then if they're engaged, they're going to be active. And so kind of like what we did with the chat, you know, we want to develop connections with our online learners and we want them to develop them with each other. A lot of people get a little cautious or, or, or concerned about synchronous teaching, teaching live online. What does that look like? Um, how formal should I be? Should I dress up? Should I wear a suit and tie? Do I need to write a script? You know, we've, I've heard some stories where the instructors were, the instructor had the script right up in front of them blocking the camera and was just reading to the students. You know, we don't want to do that obviously, but I, writing a script isn't a bad idea. I just put it away when it's time to present because you want to come across as authentic. Um, as far as formality goes, students prefer when instructors are a little more real and a little more raw. When they're, when they're too formal, when they're suited and tied, it kind of creates more of a distance than is already naturally in place by learning online. And so questions to consider, you know, how do you build this online community? What are ways that you can engage students to work together? Um, and how do we foster that sense of belonging? We, we, we know that's important for online learner success. We know that's a, a big pump on it to increase retention is increasing that sense of belonging. And so, you know, making those connections are important. Um, doing online class is a great way of doing that. It's much better than just the text heavy asynchronous learning that's you know, common in, in prior years of online learning. And so I've got a little, another way to interact with students and this is gonna be a poll. Oops, let's go back. Let me pull up the poll. And the questions that are gonna be answering the poll were questions that we asked students in the spring survey. We asked them after the quarter, you know, really got a sense of how it went, but we also asked them specifically about synchronous learning. So I'm launching a poll and a poll in, in, team, or in, in Zoom has to be pre-created. And I'll go ahead and launch that so it pops up in front of you and I'll get it out of the way. It has to be pre-created so that you can um, initialize it in, in a Zoom room and it's kind of hidden. So if you wanna use polls, um, feel free to reach out. It's not the most intuitive feature in Zoom. Zoom's a pretty intuitive tool, but it's not very intuitive. So you kinda gotta go into settings and then find that specific meeting and then you can add a poll to a specific meeting. 
So I'll let it run for a few more seconds. And the question is, according to our spring student survey, CCS students indicated this was their preferred number of meetings per week. And then there's a second question on um, how, how much did they prefer for class time? How much time did they actually prefer? And I'll go ahead and end the poll. And now um, you, you're seeing what I'm seeing right now because I'm sharing my screen, but I can just go ahead and share this with you. I can relaunch the poll. And so these are the responses that you stated, and I'm sharing that now. Um, the correct answer to number one is students preferred, number one was correct. They preferred one meeting per week. And then the correct answer to number two is everybody pretty much, most folks got it right, it was 60 minutes, they preferred that. And 90 minutes and two hours was definitely um, the lowest preferred time length. So I thought that was pretty interesting. We, we got that right, bravo to everybody. But poll is another way to engage your learners this way. It's pretty handy, you can just pop up and click it. One of the, one of the issues that came out of the spring survey and which I've seen in you know, countless online meetings and webinars is when that, that meeting time doesn't really have a clear sense of direction or a clear purpose. And so think about ways that you can make that clear for your learners. It's gonna, enc it's gonna encourage more participation. It's gonna give you a roadmap so that you don't get lost um, going on a direction where you maybe not in, didn't intend and that you can get done what you want in that short time. And so think about, can you send out an agenda to prepare students? Are there some activities that you want them to consume or, or work on before that live session? And then, you know, incorporate best practices, of course, always of tilt, including the purpose and criteria of the live sessions? How do, how do students know that they're gonna be engaged in your session? What's the purpose of that training? Um, what are they supposed to be coming in with? This is important. Um, it, in, it encourages them to come because they know that there's a reason. And it, it kind of gives them a sense of, okay, this is what's gonna be talked about. How can I prepare and how can I be better informed for this? The next piece of course is engagement and assessment. As we've seen with the, the lazy chihuahua passed out on the couch, how do we encourage our students to be active? How do we make this an active learning environment and opportunity? And so here are some tools um, listed. We've already played with chat, we've played with polling. I'm gonna put a link in the chat and we're gonna look at some collaborative documents. If you were here earlier today, Vanessa talked about a few collaborative tools that you can do synchronously as well, including whiteboards and Kahoot. And so we're going to look at a few of these. And one thing that we're going to do right now is I'm going to put you guys into breakout rooms. And then I'm going to give you a link to a collaborative Google Doc where you guys are going to work in your breakout rooms and you're going to collaborate to just throw down some ideas of what you're thinking about this topic. So hold Pat in the chat. I'm going to send you a link to a Google Doc. So I want you to open this Google Doc, and then I'm going to set up breakout rooms. And it looks like we've got about uh, 15 folks. So we'll do three breakout rooms of five. Where's the link? Just a moment. Zoom is not breaking us out. Let me stop sharing briefly. There we go. Looks like you can't share and do breakout rooms. So I'm gonna set up breakout rooms. You should see a notification pop up on your screen. Just go ahead and accept that, pop in. And then within your group, open up that live Google doc that I shared and within your group, kind of brainstorm some ideas. Did we get that, that link to the 
Google Doc? Yeah. Oh, I just sent it to Sabrina privately. My bad. I'll send it to everybody. Thanks, Kelly. Sure, man. And good seeing you, man. You too. Okay, I pasted it in the chat, so go ahead and click that link and then select your breakout room.
Welcome back, welcome back. Okay, I like that activity for a few reasons. As we put people, students into breakout rooms, we realize you know, students in breakout rooms can share their screen. They can share a whiteboard. They can talk with each other. They're more inclined to turn on, turn on their camera and chat with each other. So it's a great way to collaborate a, um, a collaborative document like a Google Doc or an Office 365 document is a great way for them to build knowledge together. You know, they're adding their thoughts, they're, you know, completing activities together. It could be a great way to prep for a quiz, you know, small breakout rooms working together. And as the instructor, you have the ability to jump between the rooms. I mostly stayed in group three just because I knew um, we have IDs, our instructional designers were in the other meetings, but um, you're able to jump between. Students are able to request your help when they're in breakout rooms. So they can raise their, raise their hand and say, hey, group one has a, needs your assistance. And then you have the option to, to do some of that. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the day, if you're, if you're using a collaborative document, you've, you've got this shared document that students can use to, you know, to review or revise or, or whatever. Just, just looking through it right now, um, I see there's a, an idea from breakout room two of asking for a thumbs up or some of the reactions. And so that's something I hadn't even thought to cover, but yeah, that's another way that you can get those reactions in canvases um, or that interaction, you know, having reactions for, for people giving you feedback. It's hard to teach an empty room, right? Um, you'll, You'll, you'll teach like this and nobody will turn on their mics. Nobody will turn on their cameras. And so getting some sort of feedback from students is important. Um, maybe that's one way that you can do that. It looks like Caleb has a note in the chat. Our group did note that some of these tools are harder to use if a student is attending a Zoom meeting from their smartphone. Yeah, 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 that's great. Um, exactly. Can I ask what is high or was, or was that discussed earlier and I missed it? H-A-I yeah. up in great breakout group one. Yeah, breakout group one, what is high? Any, any tips for us? What is that? Or maybe they're simply just saying hello. I might have just been saying hello. That wasn't a tool that came up in our group or anything. You know, I'm not surprised that your group was screwing off, Caleb. <laughs> That's nice fact is that the instructor can jump between rooms and we can manually move them too. If I know that Caleb and Kelly didn't work well together, I can, um, I can pick my groups manually because I know those two are always off to task for sure. You should probably just kick me out of the Zoom meeting entirely. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Michelle asks a good question. Is requiring the camera okay or standard practice? Many of my students keep their video off and don't talk. So I don't even know if they're paying attention. You know, that's a good question, Michelle. And people kind of have different opinions. My take is that um, I wouldn't require a camera. Um, I would require interaction, whether it's collaborating in the chat or on a collaborative document like what we just did in the breakout rooms. But there might be a lot of reasons why a student doesn't want to turn their camera on. I know I had bandwidth issues for one. Yeah, I have a, I mean, I have a colleague who is breastfeeding and, you know, there's no point in her turning her camera on when that's happening. Um, uh, students might be concerned about the actual study space that they're in and sharing that with their peers. But I think getting them from that relaxed chihuahua where they're half asleep to interactive doesn't require their camera. And so think about ways that you can, you can do that through chat or, um, you know, collaborative documents or whatever. Uh, thanks for coming, Terry. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you, uh, another way to kind of gamify this, this, this space is something like Kahoot. Uh, Vanessa showed Kahoot. This, this tool that I want to show is a, it's a game that I created for our divisional meeting. Like I wanted to create kind of like an engaging online um, trivia contest. And so I used a tool called Poll Everywhere to do that. 
and I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that as well. Or I'll show you, I'll show you what it looks like. And it's an, it's a kind of a fun way to engage your learners. And because it's more of a competitive thing, it, you know, it kind of that brings that out of that side out in people to where they want to compete and they want to be first or they want to win. So give me just a second. And what this is, is it's a, I'm going to paste it in the chat and it's a link to um, a trivia game that I created in Poll Everywhere. So if you click on the link, it should take you to my Poll Everywhere site. So go ahead and do that. And this does work mobile. But it's a very good consideration. And so I'm going to share my screen so you can kind of see what I'm looking at. And as Susan said, if I am sharing my screen and it automatically goes full screen on you and you can't navigate to other windows, that's a common thing, you can just minimize the, the Zoom window so it's part of your screen. So you can look at the browser and Zoom. So that's what I'd like you to look at right now. So if you went ahead and clicked on that link to the poll everywhere, I've got a short little trivia round and we're gonna play this game together just so you can kind of get a sense of what it looks like as a, from a student perspective. And then I'll be sharing what it looks like from the instructor's perspective or the creator's perspective. So I'm gonna pull this up on my phone to make sure I'm, make sure it's running how I think it should be running. Did you say the best way to get out of full screen when it's been shared is just escape? Yeah, I press the escape button. That's yeah. all I do. Okay. Wondering if there was something else. Thank you. Or there's a minimize button, maybe. So it might be different between Macs and Windows, but on Windows, if you move your mouse up to the top and then click on the view options button, then that brings out a little menu, and one of them is exit full screen. There it is. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you logged into Kihi, or Poll Everywhere, the trivia question should be popping up right now. And you are, go ahead and select what you think is the correct answer. Those who select the correct answer quickest are gonna get more points than those who select the correct answer last or in, with more time involved. As the instructor goes, you can see who's how many results, how many responses you've seen. So I can see, all right, we've got 10 total responses. And then you have your timer there. So the timer goes down, the poll is locked. I can click to the next page. And then if you look at what I'm sharing, that <laughs> shares the results. And so a lot of people chose Facebook. Some people chose Twitter. MySpace was the correct one. I can't believe you guys can't remember MySpace. I have so many cool songs from my rock and roll band days back there. I actually don't know if it still exists. So next question. Oh, and then we have a leaderboard. So we can see, okay, looks like Anna Gamble, our social media queen, was able to quickly answer the question quick first. Vanessa Botts, I believe, who's already taken this and is cheating because she already knows the answers, is in second place and, and so on and so on. So we can go to the next one. What is Shakespeare's shortest tragedy? Did yours come up twice? Like as he answered it and then it came back? Or? I think I goofed it. Okay, just yep. making sure. When we did this, we did this with maybe 40, 50 people. And so we had teams. So I did this in breakout rooms. I put you know groups of maybe eight in breakout rooms. And then that team worked together to answer questions. And so that was kind of a fun way to get it, keep it interactive as well. All right, Shakespeare's shortest strategy is, tragedy is Macbeth. 
Excellent. Looks like we have a new leader. Good job, Karen. And I think this part is key because we're, we're you know, it's that leadership board. It's that competitive nature that keeps students engaged. Who wrote the songs for The Lion King? Mary says, oh, Anna says she met her husband on MySpace. That is fantastic. Um, Mary says, how do I know my answer went through? I think I'm on mobile, so let me open it up. Um, at the top of my phone, it says response recorded. Caleb, what does it look like from the, um, the PC version? Uh, when I click the button, it just keeps that option highlighted in blue. But then after you, you forward on your side, then it'll tell me if I got it right or wrong. Gotcha. And it'll give you a chance to clear response too, right? I think that if yep. before Ben has done anything, I think you can, for me, it showed clear response uh, yep. with the highlighted blue, like the quick question I clicked on or the answer I clicked on. Yep, and so we can see Elton John is the correct answer with the check mark here. Bravo to everybody who got it correct. And we still have Karen leading the way with Anna and Jeff and guest 679 coming up quickly. I wonder who that is. That's me, message. sorry. I didn't get my name in there quick enough. And then we'll do uh, this last question for the, for the winner. Which rapper was the first to receive a Pulitzer Prize for music? The Pulitzer for literature, for music, yeah. Time's up. Kendrick Lamar is the correct answer. Um, and if you haven't heard his album, Damn, I highly recommend it. And a little plug for the philosophy department at SFCC. They're going to be doing a whole talk on um, the meaning of love from the perspective of Kendrick Lamar and how it's represented through his Pulitzer Prize winning album. Their last talk on the Neuralink and... Elon Musk was fantastic. So keep an eye out for that. Let's see who the winner is. Looks like the leaderboard has shaken out. We have Karen for the win. Bravo, Karen. Round of applause. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing. And we can use our reactions because someone reminded us to give Karen her round of applause, right? Yeah, so these are just some pretty simple ways, right? Um, building this took, you know, once I learned the program, building the poll everywhere took maybe 15 minutes. Um, once I learned how to use the polling feature in Zoom, it only took a two or three minutes to put that question together and out there. A collaborative document for Google, I'm pretty, proficient with Google, that only took a couple of seconds really to have prepared for this meeting. Um, these are ways that you can really engage your audience. And so rather than just um, chalk and talk, right? Rather than you just lecturing, make it interactive. Consider saving that lecture and recording that. Make this space and this time together where you have them. Make this the interaction where they are con building connections, building community connecting with you where you can assess their learning and see where they are as a class. Um, good a question from Mary says, Mary, Ben, can you see the names of everyone who responded? I could if I mandated everybody to put in their name, but you know, Kelly put in, I think just the default name that was given to him. Um, but I could see that whole list just, just like what you did. Afterwards though, Mary, I can't. Poll Everywhere doesn't show me I think all of the responses by every specific person. So I would use it more as a kind of a low stakes formative assessment just to get a gauge of how 
um, students are doing in your class with the materials, and then as a way kind of uh, to incentivize their competitive nature um, to kind of engage in the material. Good question. It feels more like just like an adult Kahoot, right? I mean, is that kind of yeah, what yeah, basically, it? yeah. And you know, when you looked at Kahoot, there's a lot of other features as well, and and same goes with Pull Everywhere. You can do. I, I've used it previously in a presentation to like create a word cloud, a live word cloud. So I'd say, hey, you know, kind of to activate schema before we got into a topic, what are two words that make you think of, or what are two words that you think of when I say the, when I talk about the topic of blank and you write in a couple of things it builds a live word cloud. It's kind of fun. It's kind of interactive. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. All right, I'm gonna share one more time and to kind of bring us through with some of the final suggestions that I have. Um, I think brevity is important. We found, we found more folks were engaged in shorter time periods, um, especially with Zoom fatigue. You gotta consider Zoom, Zoom fatigue. Keep your sessions as, as tight as possible. If it can be 30 minutes, do 30 minutes if you think that's what you need to complete your activities. It's easy just to get long-winded and let these things go too long. So keep it, keep it short as you can. Focus on your learning objectives, of course. Think about how participants can demonstrate learning with some of the tools that we presented in this session and with Vanessa's session earlier today. Think about building that community I think that's gonna be really important. It's proven to be important for student success. Um, if you're using Zoom for department meetings, I, I strongly can recommend to, to keep building community. We're hiring new people. Yeah, you, you may have been around for a, for a while and you know a lot of folks, but we need to, we need to continue building community and letting people learn, you know, learn about CCS culture and I think you know, uh, engaging students in this space is important, but if we're doing this for work online too, I think we need to consider that as well. And then as, as I did earlier, train the learners, the tools, and, and then of course practice, I think is the biggest thing. You need to practice this a few times so that you get comfortable and you get confident. There's, there's nothing, you know, lamer from a student's perspective than when an instructor has no idea what they're doing and they can't actually use the poll and they're stumbling around and clicking. I think a lot of that's to be expected, you know, especially right now, but I think if you become a little more adapt, students are gonna be more engaged. And then we get a lot of questions about, can I mandate that people have to be there? Um, can I require attendance? And we, we just recommend, no, you shouldn't. You should record it, make it available. If you're doing some sort of activities that you are using to assess learners, um, find a way to make an equivalent activity in the LMS or on ground or however next you're meeting with them. So, you know, maybe put in a discussion board in Canvas to meet some of the goals that you were doing in your class or have them complete a worksheet or an activity. Um, so those are some of the final suggestions that I have. I'll go ahead and stop sharing and open it up to the chat to, or feel free to mute your mic, unmute your mic. If you have any questions or ideas that you can create more engaging online learning, synchronous learning opportunities. Go through the chat and it says, Kahoot and quizzes let you assign a quiz for homework. Does Poll Everywhere do that? I'm not sure. I know it doesn't sync in with Canvas. We don't have an institutional account or anything like that. Worth exploring though. Oh, looks like Caleb's on it. Cool. Okay, any questions before we wrap it up today? Okay, well, thanks for joining. Um, appreciate it. I hope to see some fantastic synchronous Zoom sessions coming out of all of you soon. I'll be on the call for the next few minutes if anybody does have some specific questions. But for those that don't, thanks for joining. I appreciate your time.
Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben.